Hey, what's up guys? My name is Eric Bravo and I make music under my stage name, Bravo. I've been making music since I was 14, but I took a slight detour in my music career where I developed a cartoon short with Nickelodeon while simultaneously working on Google's self-driving car project. With time being spent indoors, being confined to one room one Saturday night, my music journey began once again as I decided to open Logic Pro X on my laptop. Little did I know I was about to embark on a lifelong goal of mine, which is to release an album. After a ton of research, Searching, planning, and selling, my debut album, Need to Know, charted on the Billboard Top Current Album Sales Chart at number 91. It landed right between Post Malone and Ariana Grande. Now, let me explain how I did that. First, I'm going to be talking about the inspiration to chart. I happened to come across CD Baby's blog. If you don't know, CD Baby is a distributor for independent artists. Uh, this video is not sponsored by them. On CD Baby's blog, I found inspiration to chart from Tyke T, Shannon Curtis, and Call Me Ace. All three independent artists wrote articles piggybacking on one another, explaining how it's possible to get on the Billboard chart without a major record label. These articles gave me the inspiration to chart and were great guidelines and a point of reference for me on my Billboard journey. So understanding the rules. According to Tyke T and Shannon Curtis article, I knew I had to reach around 750 album sales in the first week for a chance to land on the Billboard Heat Secret chart. Taking into account when the articles were written and the ever-changing roles from Billboard, I decided to set my first week sale goal a little higher to 1,000 albums. There's honestly not a lot of information online about the current rules for Billboard and what is out there contains dated information. As of August 2020, these are the rules that help me chart on Billboard charts. So rules and guidelines. Here are some helpful rules and guidelines regarding Billboard. Fans are allowed to purchase up to four copies of your album per credit card. This can speed the process of hitting your first week goals by four times if you have a loyal fan base or if you have a ton of great friends. All pre-order sales will count in addition to your first week sales. And this is important because whatever is sold in the pre-order period will count as if it's sold in your first week. And you can have up to a six month pre-order period. Release singles count towards your album sales as well. And you must get a UPC and register your album to Nielsen. And if you want to learn how to do this, let me know down in the comment section below and I'll be sure to upload a video. Also have to register each release singles ISRC code to Nielsen as well. The lowest price your album can be is $3.49. Your album or EP must have at least four songs to be considered. In order to qualify for a specific genre, half of that album has to be that genre. For example, if you're doing a jazz album, uh, you have some hip hop, you know, half of that album must be jazz in order to be considered for the jazz billboard charts. Billboard counts sales from Friday through Thursday, so try to release on a Friday. Billboard refreshes the charts every Tuesday, the week after your album is released. As of September 2020, bundling merch has been discontinued. As of January 2020, most of the billboard charts are now consumption-based charts. Consumption-based charts versus pure album sales charts. As of 2020, billboard switched most of their charts from a pure album sales chart to a consumption-based chart. A pure your album sales chart includes album sales only, no streams considered. Album sales are categorized as albums purchased digitally or physically. A consumption-based chart includes album sales and two other metrics, streams from video or audio and track sales. Most of the information out there regarding charting on Billboard explains how artists should aim for the heat secret chart since you will only need 750 album sales the first week to chart. This is not true anymore. They are referring to this chart as an album sales chart but as of January 20. 20, it's now a consumption based chart. This new role makes it harder for indie artists to chart on a heat seeker chart without the help of a record label, a placement on the Spotify editorial playlist, or a viral success of a song on TikTok. So picking a chart to aim for. By going through this experience, I would not recommend aiming for the heat seeker chart as an independent artist. To chart on the heat seeker now, your first week streams have to be massive and without a big fan base, this is difficult to accomplish. If you still do want to pursue a pure album sales chart, there are two billboard charts you can aim for. Top current album sales chart, which is the one I charted on, includes new albums that are less than 18 months old, and there's 100 spots. There's also the current album sales chart, which includes new and category albums. An album is considered a category when an album has been out for more than 18 months. In this chart, you're competing with classics such as Kendrick Lamar's Good Kid Mad City. For this one, there's also 100 spots. From my understanding, album sales charts will eventually phase out, and I barely made the top current album sales chart selling 1,000 albums my first week. If you like to make a dent in either of the charts that I just mentioned, you have to sell at least 1,100 or 1,500 pure album sales first week. And with this first week numbers, 
you're aiming towards a lower to mid chart placement. Your chances of landing top of these charts are slim since you're competing with popular artists such as Taylor Swift, Trey, Kendrick Lamar. So how did I chart on Billboard? Now that you understand how the rules are played and how often they change, here's how I managed to land on the Billboard top current album sales chart. First is pre-orders. Pre-orders play a huge role when it comes to securing a spot on the Billboard chart. Billboard allows all pre-order sales you make before your album release to count in addition to your first week sales. You can have up to a six month pre-order period and this means with a six month period if you choose to sell for that long all of the sales that you make will count towards your first week sales as well. I was a bit impatient to wait six months so I decided to give myself a six week pre-order period. The next thing is picking a platform. It really came down to two platforms for me and those were iTunes or Bandcamp. This was a hard decision to make. I wanted to choose iTunes in hopes of securing a spot on the iTunes chart as well but it was a bit too risky if my ultimate goal was to chart on Billboard and I decided to go with Bandcamp because of the following reasons. First is less clicks to pre-order. When I tried to pre-order my own album on iTunes it instead took me to Apple Music. Apple is making it harder for customers to buy and find music on iTunes and I didn't want to lose any potential sales with this misdirection. Live sale updates is another reason why I went with Bandcamp. One great feature that Bandcamp has that iTunes doesn't is its live sales updates. I can see a true count of how many pre-orders have been sold and who pre-ordered my album instantly. There's no way of tracking pre-orders on iTunes and you're essentially going in blind. Another reason is that Bandcamp is easy to price. Bandcamp allows you to have full control of your album's price on the dashboard. You can change the price without any delays. I learned the lowest I could price my album is $3.49 so I priced it at an even $3.50 with ease. And if I wanted to, I could opt that to $10 the next day and then bring it back down to $3.50. It's so easy with Bandcamp. There are many barriers trying to change pricing on iTunes that makes it super difficult. Also, one cool thing about Bandcamp is that you can continue to work on your album as you're selling pre-orders. I was still not done with my album when I started to sell pre-orders and with Bandcamp, I was able to get the ball rolling with pre-orders while I continue to work on my album. With iTunes, there is less flexibility as you have to turn in your album a few weeks before your release date. With a click of a button, Bandcamp allows you to release your project instantly. So the execution, how did I do it? I decided to release Need to Know on August 7th, 2020. I gave myself four months to finish the album in a six week pre-sale period. With Bandcamp, being able to track sales was essential and I was able to see how many pre-orders I needed left to hit my goal of a thousand sales first week. And I always knew exactly where I was with the sales. My plan was to release four singles leading up to the August release, essentially releasing a single each month to give my fans something as they wait for Need to Know to drop. And with the singles, my Spotify listeners reached 34,000 monthly listeners and my singles racked up a total of 80k streams on Spotify and Apple Music. And if you still want to aim for a heat secret chart, just note that you will need more than 80k streams and a thousand pure album sales the first week. The results. So the weekend before I was going to find out if I charted or not, a Billboard representative reached out to me via email saying that Need to Know was flagged to possibly land on the following charts. Hip Hop, R&B, Rap, Heat Seeker, and Independent chart and I was super happy you know the representative made me send him a copy of my album the cover art and artist photo and I had a good feeling that I was gonna make it Tuesday comes along my album charted on a completely different chart I need to know charted on number 91 on the current album sales chart and this chart wasn't even flagged it turns out that billboard will flag genre charts and will put them into their system so they can research your consumption numbers to see if you can make it on any of the flag genre consumption charts this goes to show that if you do want to make it on Billboard, you should keep updated with the rules and get a clear understanding of how entering each chart works to make sure you're playing the game right. If you pursue my method of securing 1,052 pure album sales the first week, just make sure that Billboard still has a top current album sales chart and it's still considered a pure album sales based chart. It'll be devastating if you put in all this hard work only to find out that Billboard doesn't have a pure album sales chart anymore. But I hope my story helps you on your Billboard journey and if you do you make it congratulations go get your billboard plaque i found jewel box platinum and rights media to be reputable plaque sellers if you guys found this helpful be sure to leave a like down below if you have any questions at all leave them in the comment section below as well and be sure to subscribe as i tell you more about my journey into the music industry as an independent artist without any promotion i currently sit at 40k thousand monthly listeners on spotify i had a song on spotify's editorial playlist so be sure to subscribe for more until next time guys take care